So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, using data to predict football matches. Uh, sorry if I call it soccer. I'm an American. I can't help it. Um, so sometime in this spring, I thought it'd be fun to, to see if I could predict the outcome of the World Cup. Uh, so you combine my day job, the thing, the thing that I, I do uh, you know, for work, which is working on BigQuery. I just come out with a book. Um, but also with the things that I do for fun. I like to watch soccer. I like to, to play in a, a couple of recreational soccer leagues. So I pitched uh, the talk to, uh, to Google I.O., which was occurring right during, during the World Cup. And, uh, but there was a problem. The, uh, the reigning king of soccer prediction was Paul the Octopus, who had gotten 13, 11 out of 13 right at the, at the previous World Cup. And I was essentially told that unless I could promise that I would beat Paul the Octopus, um, then they wouldn't let me do the talk. I assured them that would be no problem, since I knew that Paul had died. Uh, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be much of a threat. So, um, you know, during the World Cup, we, we got eight out of eight. We, we predicted live on stage um, what was going to happen in the, uh, in the round of 16. We got eight out of eight right. We then did uh, subsequent follow-ups uh, for, for the other rounds. We also did, uh, did fairly well at, at those. Um, and actually, the thing that I'm most proud of is, is not the, the prediction, but actually that we then open sourced the models that we used, uh, the IPython notebooks, the code behind it. And uh, those are available on, uh, on GitHub for anybody who wants to try and, and tweak uh, the models that we, that we built. Uh, I also want to start out by saying I'm not a machine learning expert. Uh, I'm a developer with some background in, in machine learning. Um, but uh, you know, the idea was, you know, with, with the tools that are available now, uh, anybody should be able to, to, to do this. Um, you know, that said, uh, I did have a pretty good track record, so hopefully uh, you'll uh, bear with me as I, I go through uh, how, how we did it. So the first thing that I, that I did was I wanted to learn everything I could about, about data in soccer. Um, so these are two, two excellent books. And one of the key pieces of information that these both mention is that soccer goals are Poisson distributed. Um, and this actually tells you a whole lot uh, if, you, if, you, if you think about it. Um, Poisson means that uh, it, it occurs in, uh, in um, memoryless processes, basically where previous uh, events have no Im impact on, on future events, um, which, you know, there's a, a conventional wisdom in soccer is that the most likely time for a goal to be scored is right after a previous goal. Uh, so by, the, by Poisson, that essentially is not true. And actually, when you look at the data, it's not true. It's not true either. So how does this work for soccer? Well, each team in a game will essentially have a, uh, an expected goal statistic. Uh, and so sometimes they'll score more than that. Sometimes they'll score less than that. Um, but here's what the, uh, the distributions look like for, for three uh, expected goal statistics. And the side effect of this is that the best team doesn't always win. So if we have a team with, uh, with a 1.0 expected goals and another team with 1.5 expected goals, the, uh, the first team will win uh, almost a quarter of the time. Um, so here's actually how close the data fits to the Poisson distribution. This is based on data that, that we have. Um, and if you look at actually more, more data, some other people have done other analyses, the, the fit is even, even closer. So what were the tools that we used? Well, I work on Google and work on the Google Cloud, so I wanted to use the Google Cloud platform. Um, we used Google Cloud data flows to, uh, to ingest the data actually as the, games were, as the games were happening, so we could make real-time predictions about what, what, was, what was going on. We used BigQuery for, uh, for feature computation, for feature exploration, uh, to be able to quickly uh, mine, mine data and mine ideas about, about, uh, about the, how those affect predictions. We used Google, Google Compute Engine, um, which sort of ran all the code for, our, for machine learning. And if we wanted to spin up a cluster and do uh, parameter exploration, uh, that was easy to do. Um, we also used a number of open source uh, tools. Uh, we used Pandas, which is sort of a Python uh, version of an R-like interface. Uh, Stats models and scikit-learn uh, had implemented a lot of great machine learning algorithms. Uh, we used Docker um, to, to sort of package up all the code that we needed and be able to quickly launch it. And IPython, uh, we used to, to drive the process. Um, so in, in machine learning, what's more important than actually the algorithms is, is how you model the data. And we were, we were fairly lucky in that our talk was 
at the very end of the round robin phase of the World Cup. So each team had, pl had played exactly three games. So we could use three games of history to predict what would happen in the, in the next game. And that's how we, how we built our models. And then as the various rounds progressed, we, we could increase that window uh, as, as we had more data. Uh, we had an awesome data set from Opta that had every touch, every pass, every event that happened in every game for several years of club, uh, various European club leagues, um, you know, thousands of games, tens of millions of, of data points. And to give an idea how rich this data was, uh, there was a fantastic header by Robin Van Persie in uh, one of the first games of the World Cup. Um, we, can see, uh, we can see where he was, that he was almost, uh, he was 16 yards out, which is pretty long for a header. Uh, we can see that he caught uh, the keeper, Iker Casillas, uh, off his line, he was, who was 4.2 meters out. Uh, we can see even where it crossed the goal line. So this is the kind of information that we were modeling to, uh, or sorry, mining to, to produce our features. So the, the features that proved to be important were uh, attacking passes, which are the, the number of passes in the attacking third of the field. Um, we built a power statistic, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, home team advantage is huge in soccer. That's probably not surprising to anybody. Um, we also built an expected goal statistic, which sort of uh, it combines where shots were taken from uh, and, and the number of shots to come up with how many goals you'd expected to score, which is less uh, um, susceptible to randomness than, than actually using just goals. A couple of things that we thought would be important that weren't important, uh, corner kicks and saves turned out to have very little predictive, uh, predictive power. Um, so here's just a, a, a linear regression that we did that shows the, the linear relationship, log linear relationship between the, uh, the, the distance the shot was taken from and the probability of goal. This, this is what we use for our expected, expected goal statistic. So, uh, you know, what, how did we do the machine learning? Well, we used uh, logistic regression. We tried a bunch of, a bunch of different types of, of, of algorithms. Uh, honestly, they all perform mostly about the same. Um, we used, uh, so logistic regression uh, fits to a logistic curve. Uh, the two slides ago, I showed a, a, a linear regression. This basically just fits to a, a, di a different line. Um, out of 1,500 or so lines of code that, uh, that we wrote to do the, fe the, the features and, um, and modeling for this, uh, only a very few were actually directly related to, to machine learning. Uh, um, I show right, right here what you need to do just, just to, do a, to perform a, 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 a logistic regression and, um, and prediction. So I mentioned power statistic, power statistic before. And what that is is essentially in a way of automating uh, the process where you say, well, team A beat team B, team B beat team C, so team A can probably beat team C. Uh, that gets complicated when you add uh, more teams and more games. Um, so uh, th these, are the, these are the outcome of group A from the World Cup. Uh, you, we put this into a matrix, and, uh, and then we run a, a logistic regression on it. Uh, and the, the outcome is that the logistic regression coefficients are the relative strengths of the teams. So here we have Brazil at the top and, uh, and Cameroon at the bottom. Um, you also need a way to, to, to see how well, uh, how well you did. We used an ROC curve, which basically there's a line from the bottom left to the top right, which is, which is luck. And the further you get away from, from that, that line uh, is the better you're doing. Um, so we can see the, how our models did without the power statistic, which is the green line. And then when we added the power statistic, uh, uh, our models got better. So how did we do overall? Um, as I mentioned, we got uh, all of the, the games in, in the round of 16 right. We missed, we missed one in the, in the quarterfinals. Uh, that was the Germany-France game. Uh, and actually what happened was we had accidentally ingested one of the France games twice. So France looked like they were twice as good. Um, uh, then in the, in the semifinals, we, uh, we got back on track. We were two for two. We missed uh, the, the third place game, um, but nobody cares about the third place game. Uh, we got the final right, uh, and everybody cares about the final for a total of 14 out of 16. Um, you know, that 88% uh, not so bad, but what does it actually mean to be right? So if I say that there's a 55% chance that team A will beat team B uh, and team B wins, um, does that mean I was wrong or does that mean something that was almost equally probable actually happened? And the, the funny thing is just sort of talking to people and, and in the press, the um, people often have a hard time of thinking stochastically, thinking about, thinking about probability. Um, there, you know, it was a lot of, well, 
Google got this wrong, you know, even though we said, okay, there's a 48% a chance that, that Germany's going to win. So that's just something we had to, uh, to keep track of. Um, but obviously, you can't just say, well, I only give a probability and you know, uh, it could have gone either way. You need to have a way of actually measuring how well you did. Um, and so one of the ways you do that in statistics is you, you measure against a null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis in this case was, uh, was essentially comparing it to random. So a, a random oracle would only have a 0.2% chance of doing as well as we did. So we know we're, we're, we're at least providing some, some value. Um, another thing that follows from the Poisson distribution, uh, and that, you know, as we showed before, the, the best team doesn't always win, is that football can't really be predicted at any better than 70% in the, in, the, in the long run. There's a professor at uh, UCSD uh, who has a great rant about this, calling soccer uh, Poisson noise and comparing it to numerology. Um, but actually, I, th I think of it as, uh, as one of the exciting things about the game, is that your team isn't always the, the best team out there, but you know they they can win on it uh, as long as they as long as they play well and, and maybe get a little bit lucky. Um, and to show just the what are the chances that soccer would be predictable that the best team is going to win more than 14 out of 16 times? Uh, it's actually less than less than 10 percent. So it says we were lucky this during this World Cup that the the better team tended to win. Um, so what did we do that went wrong? We you know we did some stuff right. We got some predictions right. Obviously, not everything went right. Um, data bugs can be can be particularly nasty. As developers, we're used to uh, to having having unit tests to test our code. It's a lot harder to unit test your data. Uh, an example was just the the uh, the Spain Spain France game or sorry the the the, the France game uh, that I mentioned before. Um, but also, uh, data interpretation bugs can be can be nasty. So. Based on our data set, this is what we assumed the, the, the query would be to figure out how many goals were scored by a particular team in a particular match. This is what the actual uh, query that was required was. Uh, and the, the reasons for this were, were varied, but one of them was because own goals uh, in our data set were attributed to the player that scored the goal on his own team. Uh, so we had to sort of reverse the, the team that, that, that got credit for that goal. Um, design bugs are also uh, particularly nasty. Um, so I was on the way to, to Google I.O. I had to give I had to give predictions on stage in less than 24 hours, and I realized that I wasn't actually the way I had written the queries. I wasn't actually able to predict anything that hadn't already happened before. I'd done all my modeling on on games that had already been played, and so I was stuck in, uh, in an airport lounge, frantically rewriting my queries before uh, before the uh, the conference. Um, so I want to leave with a, uh, a call to action that uh, we've got some great machine learning tools and great ways to, to do machine learning, but they can, they can get better. We need to have ways not just of, of running an algorithm, but also preventing the types of data bugs and data uh, interpretation bugs and design bugs that I mentioned, or being able to understand why particular, uh, particular models perform the way they do. So hopefully you, as a developer community, can, uh, can help make the, uh, the next World Cup uh, easier, to, easier to predict. Anyway, thanks very much. Um, you can contact me in any of these, any of these ways. Uh, I love talking about this stuff, so feel free to, uh, to, to bug me about it. And I'm holding an office hour uh, in about 20 minutes. Thank you.